<clears throat> Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Bell Zone podcast. Your go-to podcast for all things engineering and coatings. I'm Richard Bywater and today uh, in what will be I think the final episode of our most recent batch of episodes we're going to touch on a subject that we have spoken about earlier in this batch if you like. It's not a series, it's definitely not a series. Um, so again, we are going to do kind of part two, if you like, of uh, people behind the Bell Zone brand because we had such a great time uh, recording and speaking to, uh, to to Jevon and Tamara in our first episode. We have reached out and we've got some more insight from uh, from some more colleagues. So, but before we do that, it's a reminder that um, we're getting interactive on the Bell Zone podcast now. We want to hear your feedback, your questions. Uh, but most importantly, if you guys have got any suggestions for episode topics uh, or problems or areas that you'd like us to cover in future content, please get in touch on uh, podcast at bellzone.com. You know, we, we really want to hear from you. So, like I mentioned, uh, today's episode, again, we're going to talk to some of the people who make the Bellzone brand what it is. So to tell us more about this, uh, we have Laura, our Corporate Development Manager here in the Harrogate office. So welcome, Laura. Thank you. Nice Hi. to be in the chair rather than looking at it from behind the scenes. I was going to say, yeah, the uh, the amount that you obviously are involved in the planning and, and the kind of uh, setup of these podcasts, it must be nice for you to be the... <laughs> I feel like when I first said I was going to appear on, in an episode, I thought it was going to be really easy, but actually <laughs> now it's come down <laughs> to it, it's a bit... <laughs> Little bit of a nervous, but anyway, yeah. we'll go with it. It'll be fine. It's great. It's great. You're doing very, very well. Cool. So, uh, what we want to touch on today is uh, a bit about the uh, your work and, and the work that corporate development do. So, um, to to start off, if you could just tell us a bit about you know what your Me. job involves and, and a bit about you, yeah. No yeah, problem. Um, so, I've been with Bell Zone for nearly 14 years. Good. Yeah. So I've started on Bonfire Night. Nice. Um, actually applied and started the business as marketing assistant. Okay. Um, so it was like one of my first jobs from university. Um, came for an interview here quite late at night, so there was no one else around, right. and it, the interview was with the shareholder, yeah. who I think at the time actually introduced herself as another marketing assistant. Right, okay. Um, and it was it. The, the interview was great, and you know I thought everything was going well. And then as part of the interview process, um, I was asked to do two tasks. Okay. So the first task was to write a press release uh, yeah. about a new product launch. So that was fine, no problem. And then the second one was to design an in, uh, uh, an advert, like an internal poster for, for a member of staff to become Santa Claus. Right, okay. So I was like, right. No problems, I'll get my creative vibes going here. Yeah. So I was writing a bit of text, like drawing a picture of Santa. And I was trying to come up with a catchy tagline, because obviously I'm going for a marketing role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my tagline was, come jingle your bells at Bell's owner. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously in my nerves, I wrote, come jingle your balls at Bell's <laughs> <laughs> And that's I think that's actually what got me the job. And that got you and that's and fourteen years later you are still here. you're still here. <laughs> wow. Okay. So obviously started at Belzona as marketing assistant and then worked my way up through marketing. Yeah. Um so you know, I've had so many great opportunities um to become marketing manager. Yeah. Um and then this was probably a conversation again with the shareholders. Oh, I'm gonna say about seven years ago okay um, so corporate development wasn't a department back then yeah so I was part of creating this new department called corporate development so okay. that was again like a really interesting opportunity um, so as you mentioned before so you know the, the responsibilities of corporate development as a department is is motivation and also communication okay um, and that's like a real passion of, of Kim, one of the shareholders, of, particularly yeah. in terms of the motivational aspect. So. And is that of the, the staff or, you know, distributors as well? Or? It's both. Um, so internal motivation in terms of staff, but yeah. also keeping the distributor network motivated as well. So it's, it's both sides of that. Great. 
Okay, so uh, so how do you go about doing that? How do you, how do you keep staff and distributors well, motivated? Well, I'll, I'll focus on the, the staff stuff for yeah. this episode. Okay, um, great. So in terms of staff, obviously, um, we try to do lots of different things to keep staff motivated. Obviously, you know, as a business and as a product, um, like it's very technical nature, mm-hmm. it's engineering. That doesn't mean that we can't be fun as a company. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so we're always trying to come up with new ideas. Um, like I said, one of, one of the key parts of the d- department is communication. So one of the main things we, we do is you obviously like quarterly staff meetings. So yeah. making sure that all staff are, are kept in the loop and know what's going on with the business. Um, but also like a major part of those staff meetings is teamwork and, yeah. and you know having different activities. So we always try and incorporate um, something into that, whether it's, I don't know, painting a, a picture that, um, you know, what, what does Belzona mean to you? Or, you know, what does the word team mean to you? And yeah. things like that. Um, we'll do some competitions. Um, yeah, some great ones. We also do, we have staff calendars. So every month we have um, different activities for staff. So whether it's what we call a pick me up, so something that's a bit more fun. So for example, I don't think you, either of you will have been here, but we had llamas. Llamas? <laughs> that came to sight. What? And that really? went, yeah, and that went down like a storm. And we had lots wow. of selfies with uh, Gary the alpaca. Alpaca. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they came with the car park. And... Yeah, yeah. So was we this had, attached so to we an had event llamas or... here all afternoon. Was that attached to an event or was that just like a random Tuesday Yeah, that was just a random or... monthly event. Excellent. Okay, nice. Um, what else have we done? We've done things like... So recently, obviously, we had strawberries and cream for Wimbledon. Yeah. Um, Excellent. We also... So as well as the, the fun things, we also try and tie in like things that are more for well-being as well. So yeah. We've done things like um, we did self defence classes. Self defence classes. Yeah, we did that. Uh, we've I've done... seen the dan- uh, the was it ballroom dancing. We did a our own, our own version of Strictly Come Dancing, which is yeah. also quite entertaining. Uh, we've done yoga. Uh, we've done Christmas in July. Um, yeah, I see that. Obviously, our, our Miami officer have done that a couple of days ago because it's on the, our LinkedIn yeah, page. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes, you know, why not have Christmas in July? Why not? I, do you know what? Actually, I remember as well. Was it the ice cream van in December? Ice cream van in December. <laughs> yeah. What more do you want on a winter day? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice cold ice cream. I, also remember, I think that was not long after I first started. And I was just, uh, yeah, okay. It's definitely a new one. But it's, So uh, anything like weird and wonderful and, you know, a bit quirky. Certainly yeah. like Christmas in July. Um, so obviously you know in july we'll put up the christmas tree and that always is a massive talking point yeah. for visitors customers that come visitors they always remember that yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously in our other corporate offices we also replicate those types of events as well so you know every, all members of staff are kind of you know we're doing the same things and we're being consistent great so it's not just the kind of um, internal work that, that you guys organise at Corporate Development, is it? You also do quite a lot in the community? Yeah, so obviously like we're based in Harrogate um, here at our head office. So supporting local communities is really important for us. Um, but we also want to get staff buy-in as well because, you know, it's about working together to, to support those local charities and communities. So. So what we do is every year is we ask staff to to nominate for local charities and then we ask staff to, to then vote um, and then we end up with two different charities that we support yeah. each year. So this year it's Yorkshire Cancer Research and St Michael's Hospice. Um, so then with all these staff events that I'm obviously talking about before, we try and incorporate some sort of a fundraising as well. So for example, chocolate raffle we did yeah. recently. Conveniently, I actually won that. So <laughs> I don't know. How many of these do you actually win, Laura? Quite, quite a few? Or? <laughs> we won the football sweepstake as well. Brilliant. <laughs> it's not fixed at all. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so so we obviously you know tie in as much as we can with local charity. This year we're obviously doing the walk for Snowden, yeah, which you're involved with. I am, yes. Yeah. So that's um, for for the listeners. That's a, a walk up Snowden, which is the it's the biggest mountain in Wales. I, I think it's feel the like I'm second. Avoiding trying to find out much about I'm it, so pretty... I don't know what I'm dealing with. <laughs> okay, I, I think it's the second largest <laughs> mountain or highest mountain even in in uh, in Great Britain. But we're doing it at 
we're setting off at half one in the morning, aren't we? Correct. So it's a, a nighttime uh, ascent, if you like, yeah. with the idea that you're going to be at the top and, and we see sunrise. Exactly. Um, yeah. But again, that's for a fantastic cause. I yeah. think we're all raising money. So we're doing that in October. Yeah. Um, Fingers crossed, you know, the, <laughs> the weather. <laughs> I'm just visit like, I'm, I'm predicting us getting to the top and it's just going to be like 10 metres visibility of clouds. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to expect. But again, like I guess it comes back to this, you know, the, the teamwork and, yeah. and, and staff bringing staff together, especially from like different departments, because obviously you know we're all in our, yeah. our different departments and we do interact with others. But you know, like people from the, the manufacturing side, people from the sales side, people that we don't really see on a day to day basis. So, yeah. so things like that work really well. But then apart from the charity, we also um, offer a scheme uh, called One Percent. Okay. So that's where staff can use one percent of their annual time to to, so it, it works out for a full time member of staff at, at three days. So then they can use those days to volunteer for local charities. So that can be either with the charities that we we've nominated, or it can be a charity of your choice. Okay. Um, so that's been quite popular as well. Um, last year we supported um the the local animal rescue charity. Yeah, and non surprising that was actually quite popular with volunteering because yeah. who doesn't love hanging out with animals? <laughs> <laughs> so I think there were a lot of like nice dogs, and there was even a, a monkey there. So oh, wow! So that was quite popular one. Um, there's a, a nice video on YouTube. Okay, yeah, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll make sure to to get that link. So that should be in the bio or description or, or yes. whatever wherever you're show listening notes. to the show notes <laughs> show notes there we go um so there's a bit of bell zone action there's also a bit of, of animal action in there as well so. Uh, so how has covid affected um your, your events and, and your work over the past year or so yeah so i guess the main thing is people not being able to physically be together so that's been the challenge and that's quite hard to keep people motivated like obviously it's been a very difficult year um, so just going back to staff meetings, obviously we would have done them in person um, normally, um, but we've had to take those virtually. Yeah. So it's difficult to try and keep people engaged. You know, we've got a lot to say in these staff meetings and, and sometimes they can go on for it for an hour or so. So we try, again, it's kind of going back to like new ideas and, and what can we integrate in, into yeah. those virtual meetings to keep people engaged and also feel like people are together. So in the last one we did, which was uh, February, which was company anniversary, our 69th, um, we integrated laughing yoga. Yeah, now I remember that one. Which yoga. was, I think some people loved it and yeah. some people were like, what is going on? Um, but I felt like the, the more you forced yourself to laugh, yeah. the funnier it got. <laughs> Do you know what? It, it was weirdly infectious. Um, and... and Probably for, for most people on the call, it's probably a new concept to exactly. as well. So, uh, but there well, are some definite health benefits to it. I mean, yeah. Who doesn't feel good when they laugh? So. I mean, it certainly made everyone smile. <laughs> exactly. You know? So, no, very good. Um, so, yeah, so obviously um, it's the company of 70th uh, next February. So, yeah. So it's all about kind of looking forward um, to the future and that's what's keeping us busy at the moment. So that's in terms of things that we can do for the distributor network because obviously we wouldn't be here um, today if it wasn't for those those distributors as well as staff, of course. So two different elements to, to planning the 70th, so on the distributor side, but also for the staff side as well. So what we're hoping is by then, fingers crossed, um, we'll be able to, to bring everyone back together um, for, a, for a big, big event. Absolutely, yeah. God, um, I think that kind of brings us to, to the end. Laura, thank you very much for Thank you for time. having me. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. I've loved it. <laughs> Great. As well as office-based staff, Belzona also provides field support uh, worldwide to customers as well as distributors. So here to explain a little bit more about this, uh, we have Henry, who is one of our technical services engineers. Hello. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks Welcome, for having me on. Henry. Yeah. You've done, done anything like this before? Uh, once in my life, yeah, but that was years ago. Once in your life? Yeah. I think this, okay, this is an interesting point. I had a podcast back when we were 
How old were we? We must have been teenagers doing like GCSE level. Really? Yeah, we tried it. It was more it was like gaming, that sort of stuff. Nice. But it, it didn't go anywhere. It, we never put it out <laughs> anywhere. It, was literally, so it didn't go anywhere? <laughs> no, we recorded it and then just never did anything with it. So, right, okay. Yes, yeah, that's my only experience. That's quite uh, That's quite forward thinking of you, actually. Would that be before the the wave of, of podcasts that, you know... Oh, interesting. I never yeah. knew that. I wish we'd taken it further, to be honest, but... Fair enough. So, so you're going to be an absolute pro with this then? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Kid. Done Good, it before. Big words. Um, great. So uh, like the, the other guests that we've had on this episode, what we're doing is kicking off with um, a, a random fact about yourself. Another random fact after after the podcast thing. Yeah. So, uh, so Henry, well, tell us something about yourself. Interesting fact about me. Um, I, I'm a twin. I have a twin brother. You're a twin? Yeah, and I also, the interesting bit is not that, just I'm a twin. <laughs> My younger brother and sister are also twins as well. Wow. And I think the chance of that happening is one in, I don't know, it's, it's thousands, millions, it's, it's a lot. I didn't even never knew that about you. Do you know what, I, uh, did you see, again, going a little bit off topic here, but I saw in the paper last week, I think, that there was, uh, there was a, a couple who'd given birth to quadruplets yeah but that's so. after their first pregnancy of twins oh wow so, it's, so, so it'll be eight next and then yeah. 16 after that and... yeah so hey you fall in that bracket Henry you're uh... <laughs> <laughs> great I won't, but yeah I won't be having twins I don't think so. from what I've learned it skips a generation so it'll be right, okay. not my kids but then the next set of kids would have more twins but mm-hmm. but yeah we used to a part of that actually the, the best bit was back uh, where I'm from we used to go to a twins club as well wow which is as it says on the tin is for just twins right okay yeah makes sense do all sorts of gatherings and things so the majority of my friends back home will be twins as well so the, there was a twins club where you grew up, and that's the basis of many of your social relationships. Pretty much, yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So to to start things off, you you obviously are a technical service engineer here at Bellzona. Can you explain to our listeners uh, what the job is and and what your role involves? Yeah. So my job's pretty much tech support, as if you want to put it in the broadest terms. Yeah. Because Bellzona's got so many products, it's pretty much impossible for a sales guy for an applicator to learn every single one individually. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's my job to help people when they have a question about the products, how to apply it, which one to use, things like that. And basically, if, you, if you're stuck on what to do, you call us up and I should have the answer. Yeah. If I don't have the answer, I know who to ask for the answer in yeah. that case. So yeah, kind of the, the handyman of Belzona Tech Support. Excellent. But that's not just from, from a kind of office base, is it? You go and physically get involved with yeah well, that's the best bit about it is getting out on site and seeing it because it's it's one thing talking in an office about it but then when you get on site and because we do so many industries it's you could literally be in a dockyard one day you could be in a steel manufacturing plant the next day up on a roof the next day it's yeah, yeah. really varied so you have to learn you learn quickly when you get on site compared to reading in an office environment definitely yeah and yet, like you said, it's such a broad kind of knowledge base that, that you need to have. I think it's 85, 90 different products. Well, it's something like that, yeah. I've lost count now. <laughs> <It's too many. laughs> well, I mean, like we said, Jason said in the last last uh, batch of episodes that we did, we're you know, constantly bringing out new ones. And so... Yeah, that's the thing. Not a lot. The old ones don't drop off, so you have to learn all the old products and then every new one comes out with all the technical information, yeah. everything with it. And you have to, you know, be there. So as soon as someone asks you a question you know either immediately or very, very quickly where the answer is or if, if there is an answer at all to the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time there is, yeah. yeah. Great. Well, obviously it's great to have um, that kind of technical spot available uh, in terms of like not just theoretical, you know, you, yeah. you're speaking to someone who's actually going out and, and helping on applications and stuff. Um, what would you say that the most memorable application that, that you've been involved in is? So there's a couple. Um Probably the best one I've been on was right back at the start. It must have been, what, 20, 2014? Start of 2014 I was on it. Because okay. up to that point, I started September 2013. Yeah. And from that point, it was all just, you know, all theory. Learn it all, get the products down, know which one does what. And then one of the sales team asked if I just wanted to go on a, an application. It was just on the roof. 
um, using 3111, I think. The roof here? No, not this roof. Oh, no, it's yeah. somewhere else. This is in Loughborough, so this okay, is nice, quite far yeah. away. Um, and it was, it was literally all they wanted to do was coat the whole roof with product. Yeah. Uh, start to finish, you know, the, the prep, the application, mixing, testing, everything, inspection, all in one. And it was a two-week job. So I went down there um, for the full two weeks, saw it from start to finish. And that was the first time I'd ever been, one, to see a Bell's owner job in yeah. person, and two, been on a roof that high, because it was like nine, 10 stories. It was wow. very high. Um, you don't realize when you get up in buildings like that, that they do actually sway ever so slightly yeah. in the wind. Um, oh but we must have had, imagine every type of weather system possible, yeah. sun, rain, snow, fog, mist, all within those two weeks. It was like one day it was 25 degrees, bright sunshine, one day it was basically snowing and frost when we got there in the mornings. It's, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like someone saw that I was going there and deliberately threw every type of weather at it to make it hard as as hard as possible. Straight into the deep end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that was good because it's, you know, really good experience. The guys I was working with were great as well. Um, quite chatty. Uh, yeah, it was probably the best one I've done so far. Had a couple of memorable ones, but that's the yeah. one that sticks out, yeah. And it's not just the UK, is it? I, I know you've kind of been abroad for applications. And... Yeah, done a few, a um, couple of trips. I've been out to places like Serbia, Croatia, Spain was a good one as well. We did some training out there. Um, Serbia and Croatia, we visited a, a power station, did, you know, like presentations yeah. to the guys there. Um, it's, it is good seeing something other than the UK and yeah. seeing different cultures and the way they do things, the way they yeah. work is completely different in a lot of places. Um, and they are really nice places I got to go to as well. So I can't complain. Great. And, and is this uh, kind of, you mentioned training there, training to the distributors, but also being a part mm. of the kind of client side of it as well? Yeah, so when the, the Croatia-Serbia trip was, one was for an application, one was for presentation support, because they yeah. wanted they had the distributors from like Macedonia, Croatia, Serbia, all together in yeah. Serbia, but they wanted someone from Belzona Technical to say, you know, here's the, the representative of Belzona headquarters. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Spain, we were doing some Belzona Super App training uh, for the distributor they wanted to become a trainer for the super app system fantastic it's a very nice trip yeah i do like spain oh, great sounds like travels uh you know definitely a big part of kind of what you do is yeah it's more uk based now yeah but yeah it used to be eu a lot more fantastic so if you to pick kind of uh one or maybe even a couple of reasons what, what would you say the, the best part of, of your role is um best bit is sounds a bit cliche but something different every single time you come to work okay because, like I said a minute ago, it's not it's not the same work every time. <clears throat> and people come to us with really weird questions about yeah. really weird things I've never even considered. Um, so, for example, this morning I was doing one for as a customer in a vessel with all these crazy chemicals inside it. And yeah. you jump from that to a guy who wants to fix a, a guy in a swimming pool. Um, and then another one which jumps from that to, I don't know, a, a dockyard and a, yeah. a big ship that they want to do some repairs to. And then they turn into training courses, turn into on-site applications. And yeah. then I think the best bit is getting out and seeing it, really. And yeah, the, the variety of applications. Wow. So you can you find yourself, you know, being involved in jobs for, you know, multiple different industries uh, and working on different equipment. and yeah. yeah, a bit of everything. You can't tell what one day's question is going to turn into the next day. And then the day after that, it could be something completely crazy you've never heard of. It's the best bit about it. Fantastic. So another great opportunity that's also come as a result of all these different applications we do is getting involved with charity stuff okay. as well. So um, so how did how did you get involved with uh, the, the charity side of it then, and of kind of what does it mean to you? I suppose. Yeah. The first well, the first the first event that happened was the the bed race, Nesbit bed race. Yes. When that came about. Yeah. How good. many years ago? Is it twenty twenty fourteen? I think was the first one I got involved with. Um, and it's basically because I had a shortage of runners okay. for it. So just just for the purposes of, of the listeners, can you explain what the Nairsborough Bed Race is? Yeah, happens every year. I'm not a Nairsborough native, so I, I know the basics of it. So Nairsborough, again, is just the, the town which is, sits next to Harrogate, so just yeah, down the road. Might have been to it. Yeah. Um, and every year, it's for charity, and um, people build these beds, which are basically just big carts for six people to push, and someone to sit in the middle, yeah. and there's a race run around Nairsborough, and... Before that, there's a like a parade with a theme of some sort, which yeah. is to raise money for charities, uh, local charities. Yeah. And do it every single year. There's, there's, I can't remember how many teams. There's like 80 plus teams yeah. get involved with it. But, 
but this rate it's not just simply uh, uh you know you're not just pushing a cart around uh, the town on you know nice flat roads are you? No, it's, it's imagine like every, it's like every runner's worst nightmare it's like cobblestone streets and it goes to flat yeah but the the nice smooth road ends up at a ridiculous incline yeah. to get to the top nice of there and, and then you got to run all the way down the bottom <clears throat> and then get through the river on the other side so yeah it's grass to river crossing which uh i can imagine is the spectacle of the the event it's interesting seeing the teams jump in the river and then get stuck halfway across it and end up halfway <laughs> down the river before they come back and finish the race but yeah so that was the first event yeah. they said we need runners i thought well i'm new to the company i'd only been here for a few months yeah well yeah i'll shut myself in a deep end and then obviously things like the one percent club has yeah. come along for the charity work giving up our time for charity work and i thought every any charity opportunity that comes up put myself forward for it 100 yeah. percent. excellent so, uh, so you've mentioned a couple there. What would be your favourite charity event you've been involved in with the company? Done a few. Um, the we've done things for like with Henshaws. We did some facilities work for them because yeah. they basically couldn't afford it and they needed it doing. So yeah, we fixed bike racks. We did step repairs. We did you know general facilities maintenance. Um, effectively repeated that with a kennel as well, yeah. Moorview Rescue um, nearby to Harrogate. Local businesses helping them with stuff that they may not necessarily have the time to do or be able to afford to do it with the Bells Owner products. So it helps them and it gets me a day out and I get to play with the dogs and things <laughs> as well. So that's the best bit about it. Win-win. I think yeah. in terms of the the best one, it was the bed race. Yeah. I've done it twice. Um, we did it for you 2014 and a couple of years ago. Yeah. I have to say, I know the couple of years ago. So mainly because uh, I was supposed to do it with you, I think. You yeah, remember? I remember that. Yeah. And um, managed to break my leg. Uh, yeah. four days before the event it's a, it's a heck of a way to try and get out of doing it in the first place I know talk about overkill but um, but yeah okay Henry look thank you very much for your time um, no problem so that about wraps us up for today's episode uh, as always we hope you guys have enjoyed it uh, don't forget to like subscribe or simply follow the podcast so you do not miss out on any future content you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or your normal podcast provider. For information on anything that we've discussed today, uh, or any information on any Bellzona solutions or services, please visit our website, bellzona.com, um, or alternatively, drop us an email. Again, you'll find that address on the, uh, the website. A reminder that we are looking for more interaction from you guys. So if you have any feedback or if you have any suggestions on future topics that you'd like us to cover, please do get in touch on podcast at bellzona.com. Uh, other than that, I'd like to thank all my guests from today. So that would be Laura and Henry. Um, and thank you guys for, for listening. So until next time, goodbye.